G'day YouTube, I'm Reese, and this is my review on the Bauma AG SX82 chainsaw with 24 inch bar as sold by Edison's online. Uh, before we start, a uh, few things I'd like to get out of the way. Firstly, a bit of a disclaimer. Um, I'm no chainsaw expert, I don't work in the forestry game, I'm not an arborist. I'm just a dude that bought a big ass chainsaw off the internet after doing a bit of research and that's where I'm at people. Um, secondly which is kind of partly to do with that uh, this won't be a highly technical description of the item uh, it's more of an opinion piece but there will be some technical aspects to it as I do the vid. Uh, third thing I'd just like to give a big shout out to a few people on YouTube that Help me cement my decision making in buying this chainsaw. Uh, firstly, Gavman's Workshop. Uh, a lot of good information on the Bauma AG and a number of other uh, Chinese chainsaws on the internet. Uh, Scott O'Malley and Lynn Patnat, your uh, YouTube videos have been quite instructional and uh, I found them quite informative, uh, especially Lynn Patnat. The little upgrades that you did with yours. I've also done with mine to an extent uh, and I'll go over that a bit later. Um, lastly in the shout outs there's a uh, young bloke by the name of Blake Riddle who did a review on the Giants. Mate that was a very funny review. I watched it a couple times. I got chuckle out of it. It was a, it was a good review so thanks to you guys. Um, firstly before I bought the chainsaw I was not really in the market to buy a chainsaw. I was actually looking for LED light bars for my uh, four-wheel drive Rodeo and um, through one of the Facebook uh, sellers, I think it was Vic Off-Road, I was looking there and there was advertising for chainsaws, these Giants chainsaws which I didn't know what they were and saw a picture of them I thought oh, I'll, I'll check them out. After doing a bit of Googling and a YouTube search, the first uh, review I came across was uh, Blake's on the Giant's Chainsaw, but uh, he seemed to be the only one. However, in the suggested feed, there were quite a few of these Balma Ag chainsaws, and immediately I thought, Balma Ag, what is this German chainsaw that I've never heard about? Um, so, doing a bit more research, uh, I come across the Edison's. Uh, web page or website and found the Bauma AG is sold through those guys along with a number of other items. <clears throat> uh, after that I decided to do a bit of research on the Edison's website and the uh, AGR machinery and the story, the background story to David Mills which I found quite interesting. I won't go into great detail here but if you are interested in backstories and stuff like that, uh, Google David Mills, uh, the Australian Financial Review did a, uh, a piece on it and I, I found it quite interesting. Um, let's go over the good and bad of the chainsaw that I've found. Uh, the good thing about it was the price point, 219 bucks delivered for an 82cc chainsaw. Uh, when I looked at them, done my research, they do a 92cc uh, at $299 delivered dimensionally they look identical other than the capacity of the engine uh, it has a stated horsepower rating of 5.5 horsepower for this bad boy and 6 horsepower for the SX92 I did a bit of thinking and I thought uh, am I gonna notice half a horsepower difference between the 82 and 92 and I really don't have the experience with chainsaws and I knew damn well that half a horsepower I was never gonna notice however an $80 saving I did notice so I went with the 82 uh, the reliability I've had it out a few times and it's it's been pretty good starts up goes goes hard um, and it goes well uh, another good point there are quite a number of reviews on YouTube I'd gone over some of the YouTube users that have put reviews up and that they are really good reviews go and check them out they are well worthwhile especially for a bloke like me who's not had much to do with these things other than a little Husqvarna I bought years ago um, really really good reviews so uh, a lot of information out on them <clears throat> uh, the interchangeability and the upgrades with Husqvarna parts on these things 
uh, particularly with Gavman's workshop. He goes into detail, uh, and I think that is a good thing. I've got the idea of down the track coming back to a 20 inch Husqvarna bar and running some Oregon chains um, and having a chat with Gavman. That's going to be a, a fair weapon when it does. Um, the eBay store. Uh, I, this first one I didn't buy on eBay. I actually got an MTM chainsaw afterwards, which I did. The Edison's eBay store um, seems to undercut themselves from their direct sale store, and they also, from time to time, looks like have um, discounts um, if you type in a code. And I got a really good deal on that MTM that way. Uh, so their eBay store is definitely well worth a look. But do your research. Um, what else can I speak about? I might go over some of the maybe bad things. Uh, first thing, and this is probably nitpicky. When I first got it, uh, there was what I thought. I'm not sure if it was just the way that the plastic was injected, whether it just had a little dag in the machinery, if that's a hairline crack. It looks like a hairline crack. Uh, hasn't gotten any bigger. Um, but like I said, that's probably nitpicky. Overall, um, the plastic seem all right. The fit to finish, probably not quite as good as me little Husqvarna, but I'll talk about that in a moment too. It does come down there, seal up, but yeah, I found with some of these Chinese chainsaws, you, you gotta hold your tongue in the right way to get it all right. Um, something that has been discussed by a number of people, this side adjustment screw. It is uh, very finicky. It is very, uh, I don't know if fragile is the right word. When you take the cover off, you can see uh, there is plastic and there's a there's a uh, screw in there. Uh, you, you, you've got to take it nice and easy when tensioning the chain. If you go too hard, you'll feel it start to, uh, it, it'll miss the tooth and, and you'll know. So um, just got to take it nice and easy. Uh, if I had to suggest anything to Edison's is to just go back to the conventional method where you've just got one screw and an adjustment here. It it would it's a simpler system but it would be much stronger I suppose than this little guy right here. Um the other thing I noticed with it when I was cutting and this is some of the big boys that I'd been cutting with it, some red gum there, it was two foot across. Uh, when I was cutting, I was cutting away and I could smell some burning, which at first I thought, oh, I'm not getting oil through it. It's cutting through it like it's burning at the bar. I slowed down, stopped, pulled it out, had a look, looked at the bar, looked at, looked down as I was cutting. I couldn't see any smoke coming out, but I could smell burning. This little exhaust port here, when you look at it, it looks like there's three exhaust ports, but there's actually only one. They're actually countersunk for a couple of screws to hold the exhaust on. You've only got one port. My issue with the port there is I was cutting this, these big bad boys here and using the log spikes there, levering up and down, up and down, cutting away, cutting away. This was actually burning a line across the wood as I was cutting. Now, by my own admission, I'm no expert in chainsaws, but I didn't think it was a good thing. Like, you, you wouldn't be cutting wood in the fire danger season, never would. Um, the properties that I get access to. I'm extremely respectful of the right and wrong things to do on those properties. Never do the wrong thing. Always do the right thing by the property owners. Um, and I was looking at that and I thought oh, I didn't much like that. If they ever update these things from time to time, yeah, I'd be doing something about that exhaust port. Making it so it, it, it wasn't doing that. I just, yeah, I didn't like that very much. Uh, the other thing that I'd noticed, and I, I'm not going to say it's a problem with the chainsaw, uh, I found that the oil feed seemed to be a little bit uh, hampered. It, it, it wasn't feeding oil, like you'd run it for a bit and you wouldn't get that stream of oil. I did actually buy some um, is it Western Gulf oil, they've got this super tack and it, it's really thick stuff. So the old adage of when you empty the fuel, you'll have normally emptied your oil or it's gone right down so you fill both up at the same time. It was hardly using oil. Uh, in the instructions, I, I couldn't actually find the uh, 
the oil uh, delivery screw, like the uh, the screw underneath that uh, increases or decreases the flow of oil to the bar. I actually had to find that on YouTube. Uh, there is a screw in there. I adjusted that right out, and it seemed to be using oil, but once again didn't get that stream of oil when you ran the chainsaw just down on a bit of wood. Um, I am planning on using a lighter grade of oil just to see if that alleviates it. It doesn't seem to have burnt the bar, uh, the bar guide and all that, so I think there's been oil getting out there, um, but it just, yeah, it, it didn't seem to be oiling up like you would expect to. Um, since I've bought this Balma Ag, it's funny, um, I mentioned this to a few people and they've come out of the woodwork and said, oh yeah, I bought one of them a couple of years ago, or I've, yeah, I've got one of those, so I, I think I know two people with a chainsaw and uh, I know a bloke who's got a post hole digger and everybody that's got these items uh, speak highly of them, they're just fair machines, especially the guy that's got the post hole digger, he, he reckons it's a fair weapon. Um, one of them that's uh, got an SX-72, which is an older one with the birdcage style uh, air filter in it, um, tells me of a story, they had a big gum tree come down, uh, it was either in their yard or the neighbour's yard, gone over a fence, so they'd got their heads together to cut this thing up and fix it up, and uh, the neighbour is uh, supposedly a uh, chainsaw TAFE teacher, instructor. And uh, he had his big still, and um, my friend Michelle, her her husband David, the SX72, and when they were cutting away, uh, apparently the TAFE teacher had uh, turned to Dave, and he was keen to have a go of the Baumarag because he he just saw how good of a thing it was and what a good job it was doing. So um, when when you got somebody that's experienced like that, that that looks at the item, and they've got the U Butte still Magnum and yeah, has a look at the Balmerag. I think I thought that was a pretty funny story. Pretty telling of the item. Um, something else I'd like to discuss with this: when they come through, they they come with the uh, fuel mixer, uh, the the basic tools, a, a file, uh, your um, spark plug, and uh, nut spanner with the uh, screwdriver on it. It also comes with a, a basic safety kit, and uh, whilst I had a bit of a chuckle at Blake Riddle's um, commentary on the safety kit that he got with the Giants chainsaws, I, I uh, had a bit of a philosophical view on it, and I, I actually thought it was a good thing. Yes, they are cheaply made, pretty crappy items, like the, the earmuffs and the eye protection and the gloves. They're, they're very basic, very cheap, but it... it it was, uh, in, in a way, telling for me that these guys are selling the stuff, but they're thinking of safety when they sell the item because y you buy these big chainsaws and they're, you know, they're, they're not for the unwitting or unprepared person. If you, you know, if you're not a person that's, you know, savvy-minded with this sort of stuff, you can, you can do yourself a wrong. And, and I, I thought that was quite telling. So you look at the stuff and you think, like, it made me think. Yeah, I, I need to make sure I've got the right stuff. I've got good eye protection. I've already got good heat protection. Um, you know, get the get the good stuff, the good gloves, the chaps, whatever you need, the safety stuff. Um, I, I just thought it was a good thing. Um, yeah, they are cheap and flimsy. Are they better than nothing? Yeah, possibly. Um, but, yeah, just it put in my mind... Uh, being safety and conscientious when using these items. Um, are these things a Husqvarna or a still? No, they're not. They're not. They're a quarter of the price. Is it good enough to tackle jobs like a big Husky or a big still um, for less than a quarter of the price? Yeah, I think so. Um, like that, that bit of wood, there's two foot across. And I cut... I reckon about four or five metres of that. No problems at all. Um, yeah, the chain got dull, it slowed down in the cutting, but that thing, uh, it, it, it was a real goer. I'm very impressed. And in regards to its price, it certainly has 
paid for itself with the amount of wood that I've been able to collect with it. I couldn't, I couldn't buy the firewood, buy the trailer load for you know what I've I've cut with this thing. Not just this big red gum. There was a mongrelly old bloody gum of some description out there that I hooked into. Like I can't even split it with the blockbuster. It's, it's hard nasty shit. But um, yeah, I, I think overall uh, they're a good thing. They are a good thing. Um, thanks for watching my video. Um, please check out the uh, the YouTube channels that that I'd spoken of earlier. They've got lots of good tips and tricks to these things, um, particularly with uh, Lynn Patnat talking about the the oiler, making sure you get a bit of elastic in there just to block that little plate that uh, covers the oil gallery that comes through there, just to stop from all the um, dirt and sawdust from getting in there. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.